Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of you asking me about fitting the larger tyres to the Hilux, so I'm going to go over that today. Um, when I was looking for this information, there was it was there, but it was scattered all in different places, so I'm going to try and consolidate everything that I know into this one video. And um, it's going to get a bit long because there's quite a lot of information, so if you want to skip straight to the end, I'll put the time up here. Um, I'll just have a quick video on how to actually fit 285s. Guys, we're at the shop now, um, so I've got the car up on a little bit of a ramp just to give you a bit of a demonstration. IFS suspension setup, suspension lift won't allow you to fit bigger tyres. The reason for this is that as your suspension articulates and you get compression on one side, you're basically going back to your standard suspension height, or in some cases, even negative two, three, four inches of suspension height as the wheel tucks up into the guard. So when you're fitting your tyres, you don't need your lift kit first. You want to make sure it fits on standard height suspension and even more compression. So there's a few things I'm going to run over first. Before you do anything, I'm going to go to a tyre shop and get them to adjust the caster as far forward towards the front of the car as possible. This will move your tyres forward and away from the body mount. I called a few tyre shops first and asked them about it. More than one shop told me that the tyres wouldn't fit and that basically they didn't want anything to do with it. So call around and find a place that knows what they're talking about and is willing to help. You will have to go back for a wheel alignment later also, so be prepared to spend a bit more money. Upper control arms or UCAs. While on the topic of caster, we'll talk about upper control arms. You might have seen them in some of the more expensive lift kits and wondering if you need them. UCAs do a few things. First of all, by adjusting your caster, you're putting increased wear on your tires. Toyota sets the caster from the factory for multiple reasons like the return to center, stability at speed, and steering stiffness. Aftermarket UCAs will give you a few degrees of caster correction to counteract the adjustment we are making. Some will also give you more clearance between the UCA and the tyre, allowing for larger widths and different offsets to be used. They should all allow greater clearance between the shock and strut assembly to allow more droop without binding, and most of them have an angled ball joint to allow extra travel and restore camber, which is also effective when we adjusted the caster. I'll just explain rim offset if you don't know what that is. So the rim offset is the distance that the mounting point is spaced from the center of the rim. For example, if the mounting point is directly in the center of the rim, that's zero offset, which is what I currently have, which is what these rims are. So the point where the rim mounts to the hub of your vehicle is where the offset is measured from. What I'm using, which is a 28575 on a 16 inch rim with a positive 10 or zero offset. This combination is not going to be legal without a mod plate as this is more than two inches over the factory tire size. In my opinion, this is the best size upgrade without losing too much power. You don't have to do a body mount chop to fit this size. This size is skinnier than a normal 33 inch tire, which would be 12.5 inches wide, as opposed to this tire, which is 11.5 inches wide. This just gives you that bit of extra room and make sure you get full steering lock to lock. These will fit inside the guards with a positive 10 offset and line up with your SR5 flares. If you don't have an SR5, they may poke a little bit or you might have to install some aftermarket flares. Um, I have 60 mil flares, so the zero offset fits exactly in line with my flares. It is possible to fit larger diameter tires but it starts to get a lot more expensive past this point, which is why I chose to stay with this. To go beyond this to 34s, 35 inch tires, you would definitely need to do a body mount chop and you would definitely need to re-gear your diffs. Without a re-gear, your car will be very underpowered and your speedo will be way up. I've tried to get a bit of compression going here. There's a few things limiting me. Um, I've still got the sway bars in, they will limit you slightly, but it will be illegal if you do take them out. So if you get pulled over, just keep that in mind. Um, I also have springs that were out of a car 
which originally had a bull bar and a winch fitted. And as I don't have either of these things, the spring rate is a bit too high and my car can't compress them all the way with the weight that's in it. Before you do anything, I'm gonna go to a tire shop and get them to adjust the caster as far forward towards the front of the car as possible. This will move your tires forward and away from the body mount. So the best thing to do is to put it up on a ramp or jack up one side if you can and go full lock from one side to the other with your larger size tires on and see what it's going to hit on. I've made a cut on this bumper because the wheel was rubbing on the bumper. I found a really easy way to cut this was just with a four inch grinder and a slim metal cutting wheel. Um, it doesn't really matter what cutting wheel you use, it's just really thin plastic, if anything cuts it super easily. So you can even use a hacksaw if you have nothing else or an air saw or a rotary tool will work as well. Just take the wheel off first and mark it out with a sharpie and you can just take bit by bit off, you don't have to do the whole thing in one go. Um, and just recheck, see if it fits, take the wheel off again and trim some more as you need. Just make sure you have enough so that under full compression you're not going to be rubbing on the bumper. If you have a bull bar, it's basically the same thing, you're just going to have to see where it's hitting and you'll definitely need a grinder for that one. You'll have to trim a bit out and then make sure you touch up the paint so you don't get rust in your bull bar. So just make sure that you start from the top here, you want to come down on a pretty harsh angle and then follow that straight line down to the bottom so that it looks normal from the outside and you can't tell that it's been cut. Uh, so after you got that cut, I just eyeballed the other side and got it pretty much the same, it looks the same to me anyway. Um, if you really want it perfect, you could get a bit of cardboard and cut out a template and make it exactly the same on the other side, but close enough, that's good enough for me. Flip. It's just held in by three bolts, which are a 10 mil with a Phillips head, these three here. Um, when you take that off, you do get a bit of mud splatter up the side of your car, so if you're worried about that, you might wanna cut a bit out of this and remount it back on, or make some kind of other mud flap out of just some thin rubber. Thanks for watching, guys. That's all there is to it. It's pretty simple, really. Um, the only other thing you might want to think about is getting a mod plate done. It can be fairly expensive, but just keep in mind that this combination is not going to be legal. Yeah, thank you. Catch you in the next one.